Jesus. Put them fire, put them fire. to encourage every one of you watching right now to do well to share the link share the link with as many people as possible share the link till Facebook says that you can no longer share the link and I believe that as you share the link with other people for them to connect they'll be blessed in this session of Wednesday we are going to be talking about prayer the benefits of prayer the importance of prayer what is it that makes prayer effective and I really I know that God is going to use a servant to bless us mightily so please once again I would encourage you to do well to share the link and I'd like, to, I'd like us to know also that we have this wonderful drink, Healthy Hibiscus Infusions. Healthy Hibiscus Infusions. This was a product that came through some of the teachings on Wednesday. And um, they are doing, it, it tastes very good. It tastes delicious. I would encourage you, if it's possible, you can always get some to drink. And you'll be blessed, you'll be refreshed, and you'll be edified. I'd like us to also know that share your experience, you know, experience conference over the years we've been having an experience conference and this season this year also we are coming away with another powerful session of of, of Wednesday sorry another powerful ex session of experience conference it's going to take place on the 11th of Sep October to the 18th of October please do well we like people to share their experience share your experience of how it's been a blessing to you how the experience conference has blessed you has edified you has refreshed you and I know that as you do that we are going to all be blessed and we're going to all be refreshed. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with Dr. Michael Bedinia Mitchell. Stay tuned and stay connected. In 2014, we experienced grace at work. That the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. Glory to God. In 2015, a divine turnaround. Christ came to tell somebody to tell him, it is a day of your turnaround. God has fixed you, and God is turning you around. Greater things are lying ahead of you. You will arise and you will go forward. The wheels of favor. 2016. I see a glory breaking out now. He will cover thee uh, with his feathers. Uh, and under his wings uh, shall thou trust. Uh. Jesus the Christ. 2017. To defy the ability of any human being to measure. I've come to make an announcement. Something good is about to come out of you. 2018. Jesus the miracle. Worker. Sometimes you need to get dirty with the devil and tell him I don't think so you come against me I split you yes I will crack you right upside the head and I'll make you regret the day you ever put cancer on anybody in my family's body I'll make you regret in 2019 the same Jesus every shot we are just telling our haters that there is nothing they can do about what God wants to do with us can you give God the loudest shout of prayer? We are his representatives on earth and he's our representatives in heaven. So we can never be defeated. You know why? You cannot be defeated when Jesus is your lawyer. In 2020, it's time to hashtag share your experience over the years with us as we celebrate experience from the 11th to 18th October this year. Share your experience by texting or making a video and sending to us via WhatsApp on 055-865-9269 or any of our social media handles. God bless you. The Music Experience 2020, a live online worship experience featuring the gentlemen. Destiny Songs, Sandra Afri, Minister Oura, Kojo Tufo, Eric Jeshron, and Effie Grace 
Join us live on the B and Michael social media handles for an unforgettable experience on the 11th October at 6 p.m. Hashtag share your experience. God bless you. In 2014, we experienced grace at work. That the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. Glory to God. In 2015, a divine turnaround. Christ came to tell somebody today, it is a day of your turnaround. God has fixed you and God is turning you around. Greater things are lying ahead of you. You will arise and you will go forward. The wheels of favor. 2016. I see a glory breaking out now. He will come with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust Jesus the Christ 2017 you defy the ability of any human being to measure I've come to make an announcement something good is about to come out of you in 2018 Jesus the miracle worker. sometimes you need to get dirty with the devil and tell him I don't think so you come against me I split you yes I will crack you right upside the head and I'll make you regret the day you ever put cancer on anybody in my family's body I'll make you regret in 2019 the same Jesus every shot we are just telling our haters that there is nothing they can do about what God wants to do with us. Can you give God the loudest shout of prayer? We are his representatives on earth and he's our representatives in heaven. So we can never be defeated. You know why? You cannot be defeated when Jesus is your lawyer. In 2020. It's time to hashtag share your experience over the years with us as we celebrate experience from the 11th to 18th October this year. Share your experience by texting or making a video and sending to us via WhatsApp on 055-865-9269 or 80 of our social media handles. God bless you. There is a level you can get to that is almost obvious that even the blind can see that you walk right with God. If you don't allow God to lead you, you'll be led astray. And there are so many people who are Christians, but they have been led astray. Somebody used psychology and mental analysis to give them a word and they latched onto it as if it was prophecy. And so they have walked in deception and they thought it was God that deceived. The anointing is born first of all out of relationship the anointing comes as a result of the relationship with God I'm not talking about a gift with a gift you can lose the relationship and still have it when a, your husband buys you a car and there is a divorce you can go away with your car so with a gift even if the relationship is no more there so somebody can be prophesying there is no relationship with God and he still prophesied because it's a gift so when you have a gift you can run away with a gift even after the dissolution of the relationship but when it comes to the anointing you can never break relationship and still have the anointing God is raising a holy army people that when they walk you can tell that these are holy men and holy women of God not people who have compromised their stance and their standards and they are playing and fraternizing with the devil you cannot dine with the devil and expect to receive the power of the Holy Ghost the reason why we are not wielding so much power is that even though we are praying and professing to be men and women of power we are powerless because the devil has something with us the Bible says Jesus said the prince of this world cometh but he has nothing in me you have to get yourself to a place child of God whereby you can slap your chest and say that I have run the race I have I have done what is right I have I have endured I have fought the battles of life and yet the devil has nothing in me and if you really want to get to the heights of supernatural performances don't look for faith look to be right with God
Welcome back to Wednesday Live. Today is going to be another glorious, explosive session. I would encourage you to share the link with as many people as possible so that they can connect and be blessed. I would also like to remind you that our Experience Conference is coming on on the 11th to the 18th of October 2020. We really want to hear from you. We'd like to know how our Experience Conferences so far have blessed you, have ministered to you. So we want to encourage everyone that you can send in. It could be a video. It could be a text message. Just let us know how it's been blessing you. And um, I believe that God is also going to enrich you. God is going to bless you. And God is going to empower you. We have today a very, very, very blessed, gracious, glorious man of God in the house, Dr. Michael Bodhi Nameche. And he's going to teach us and take us through some truths about prayer. So, um, Papa, we are very much happy to have you. Thank you, sir. God bless you so much. Thank you for having me. Papa, I want to thank God so much for your life. I want to thank God. You know, you've been blessing us, helping us. You've been coming away with Command Your Morning, Wednesday Live, Morning Aura, uh, virtual right. services. And I want to say that God bless you so much. Really appreciate all the investments Amen. you have been making into our lives. Amen. Normally, um, doing things for God become easier if you know it really is God you are doing it for. Wow. And if you get to know that he's the one that is assigning you to get it done. If you enjoy what you do, it's no more work. Wow. Okay, so I'm um, waking up every morning, every morning. By 4, everybody is home. By 4.30, everybody, of our, every member of our team is here. Wow. And um, by 5, we've started. Um, it's not because our beds are not comfortable, but because God has assigned you to do a work for him. And when God assigns you to do a work for him, and you know that it's God's work, that's number one. Number two, you know that it is what he requires of you. Doing it becomes very, um, it blesses you. It's yeah. just like saying that he who waters is watered himself. Wow. And so you find fulfillment in doing what God wants you to do. I think the main problem is when you begin to think that you are doing it as a result of a strategy. Okay. We did not start command your morning because we saw somebody doing it. Yeah. We did not start command your morning because we realized that it will help us. But we started command your morning because we knew that that was what God wanted us to do. Wow. And um, knowing that that's what he wants us to do, you can tell um, from the experiences of others that is blessing them because it is in alignment with God's will. It is in alignment with divine timing. And so it's, it's always um, it's a blessing knowing that you can contribute Amen. just a little. Amen. Because, um, man of God, the work of God is such that you can do it all. Yes. And it's just uh, your contribution. Yes. Paul made his contribution. Peter made his contribution. contribution. John made his contribution. Yes. Isaiah, Elijah, Elisha, all of them made their contribution. contribution. So if God is giving you that glorious opportunity to make your negl most negligible wow. sort of contributions, you should be pride in it. Just see it as a privilege. I think that is what is keeping us. Wow. So we are also honored that it's blessing people. Wow, we thank God. We thank. Looking at the numbers, it's really, really blessing people. And you we, can we tell that it, it will keep on blessing people and increasing. Amen. 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 Papa, I want to thank God also for this opportunity for you to teach us about prayer today. I, I heard about your university, your campus days when you used to pray a lot. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, I believe that yeah. we are blessed that today we are going to hear from you and it's going to really help each and every one of us in the aspect of prayer. So I want to encourage all our viewers that as we go on in this session, if you have any question, if you have any comment, please do well to put it at the comment section. All your questions, as much as possible, Dr. Michael is going to answer your questions <laughs> on prayer. <laughs> Amen. Papa, please, what is, what is prayer and what is the, the importance of prayer? Is it, is it necessary for us to pray? There are some people that um, they feel like there are others that are wasting their time praying. So meanwhile, they are getting the results that they want to get. So please, we'd like to know what exactly is prayer and what is the importance of prayer. Thank you. Prayer to me is, um, is a demonstration of your trust in God. Okay. A proof of your dependency on God. Um, when you see that you are God dependent, you will communicate with him. Wow. If you see God to be the compass of your life, you will know that if you don't go back to him, you will miss your road. Yeah. So prayer to me is that pathfinder. Prayer to me is that compass. Prayer to me is that, um, is that voice of the voiceless. Wow. Uh, prayer, let me share something with you. When I was growing up um, and when I 
came to the faith. The first time I pastored a church was, was 22 years ago, 1998. Many, many years. And um, um, that was the time I had a revelation about prayer. About prayer. And everybody around me will tell you that I wrote it on every book of mine. Every book, every test book, full scope, whatever book that I had, it was boldly written on it. Anything born out of the womb of prayer can never die. Wow. Anything born out of the womb of anything, prayer. Anything. Anything that was conceived. Anything that was born. Whatever was born through prayer can never perish. You can't kill anything that was born out of prayer. If a marriage was born out of prayer, you can't kill it. Wow. If a business was born out of prayer, you can't kill it. If a ministry was born out of prayer, you can't kill it. Okay. Whatever was born out of prayer can't, can't be killed. You can't kill it. Wow. So that happened to be my, that was my mainstay. That was, that was what I saw. That was what I picked up. And... Um, when I, when I saw that, when I realized that, when I had that revelation, I chose not to rely so much on strategy, but to rely so much on prayer. prayer. So I am prayer heavy. Amen. Um, what, what I mean is that most of the things, when you, so like Dr. Sarkodier, like the pastors you see around me, all the guys, they will tell you this. I don't sit them down to say, let's strategize. Wow. So when you see TMA doing so many things, it's not because we sat down, we've gone on Man. a strategic session, thinking about how to... Because most of the things, if you ask me, if anything is prayer-driven, spirit-led, success is inevitable. Amen. And so... If you ask me about prayer, I'll tell you that it's just a demonstration. It's a proof that you are dependent on God, you trust in God. It's a proof that you know that your, help, your strength won't suffice in any of your endeavors. It's just, it's just plain and simple. I have always believed that if you, if you give birth to anything through prayer, it can't die. And, and because of that, I will communicate with my source so prayer is again because it's a trust and dependency on god you're just going back to god um telling him that you know what i know that my strength can carry me any further Amen. and so i want you to help me um prayer is when humanity calls for the help of divinity wow prayer is when there is a clarion call made to the heavens wow. like an sos save wow. our souls wow Prayer is when men are able to lift up their hands in total surrender and go on their knees in humility yeah. and call on the God of all power. Amen. Call on the Almighty to step in to their lives Amen. because they know that once he steps in, things will align. Amen. And um, I think um, the, the, the hymn, um, um, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, um, was summit that most of the time people have problems because they don't go to God in prayer. And probably I need to explain that. Because the fact that you are talking, the fact that you appear to be saying something doesn't mean you are praying. Because most of the time those exercises are merely vocal exercises. Wow. You are just training your vocal cords. So Papa, someone can be praying but it's not really effective. Of prayer. course. Somebody can be talking to you, but you know you are not listening. Yeah. Somebody can be talking to you, um, or you can be talking, but if anybody is to look at you, the person can tell that you are distracted. Yeah. So prayers that are... F let me give you an example. So if you are praying, it moves beyond... So you are a triune being. Let me take you on a journey. Yes, you are a triune being, very tripartite in nature. You have a body, you are a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body, or you are a body that is housing a soul that in turn houses a spirit. Yes, so there are three houses. The outer house is the body. The intermediate house is the, yes, the soul. Then the innermost house is the spirit. You can't get to the spirit until you go through the body and the soul. We feed the body with spaghetti, rice, chapati, 
um, couscous, all the food mm -hmm. that you can find. Um, Acheke, Gabi's, Gobe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, kinky, yes. banku, fufu, uh, jollof, all of that. We, that's, we feed the body. body with that. That's a, pa a way of feeding the body, to nourish the body. Then you put creams on the body. Then you go to the barbering shop or you go to the hair salon to get your hair done. You twist, you put a wig cap, you do the mascara, you, yeah. taking care of the body. That happens to be the outer body. Yeah. Then how do you feed the soul? You feed the soul with information. Okay. Um, the soul thrives on information. The music you hear, the books you read, the kind of information that gets to you. Because the information that gets to you determines the food that gets to the spirit. Wow. You can't get to the soul, the spirit, without getting through the soul. You can't get to the soul without getting through the body. If it is the information, it's going to go through the ears, and so the body is working. The body becomes a portal to the soul. With your ears, you hear the music. That will feed the soul. Now, if the soul is fed negatively, um, you can be there and your soul will want to do other things. Yeah. You, you begin to have some desires because your soul has been fed yeah. that way. If the soul is fed right, the soul becomes so heavy that the spirit can thrive. Wow. The kind of information that goes through it. Okay, so that happens to be um, um, what feeds the spirit. You feed your spirit through the food or the things you give to your soul. Then prayer becomes like the fertilizer. Amen. Okay. Now, with, with regards to um, what we are just talking about with, with, with prayer, when you are communicating, your body and your soul should be in alignment with the words that are coming out of your spirit. That is, if your spirit is the one praying. Paul said in the book of Romans, we know not how to pray or as we ought, but the spirit with groanings which cannot be uttered makes intercession on our behalf. And so the spirit is speaking through the portals of the soul, but you can hear your mouth um, saying stuff or you can see the movement of your lips. And so the spirit is speaking, making utterances. Yeah. The soul opens up for the spirit to make the utterance. The body is just in alignment. Now, the, what you will notice, and one of the things that will help you to know that your prayer is not going, mm -hmm. is when you are praying and your mind is wandering. Wow. It means that there is no harmony. So you are praying and, for instance, you were praying and somebody called you. And immediately you picked the, you were praying. In the middle of prayer, you praying. And a call came through and you picked the call. Uh, oh, sorry, um, you know what, I'm praying. When I, I'm done praying, <laughs> I'll call you back. Um, I'm praying now, sorry, sorry, but I'm praying. Do you know what you just did? No, Papa. You just put God on hold. Wow. To talk to a man. So it's just like saying, God, you know what? I have an important call. Let me, let me attend to him. Please hold. Wow. Wow. Now, it, it, it talks about your reverence. Wow. Do you go to the president of your republic? And whilst you are talking to your president, somebody calls you and tells, Mr. President, please hold on a minute. Wow. Eh? I, my, my person is calling. I want to talk to somebody. And so Mr. President, just one minute. Uh -huh, now the saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, you so, Papa, such a thing can negate the person's prayer. Be, of course, you are not. Don't forget, in the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter number 11, when, Jesus, when they had come to Jesus and said to Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus said, hallowed be thy name. You should get to a place where you hallow God. Wow. You reverence him. Wow. That is why I normally don't like... I, do you know why I don't allow anybody to call me reverend? No problem. It's because I've always felt it's a title of God. That's why you see my posters or anything, I'll ra rather write Michael Bodinia Mitchell. If there is a title, there should be my PhD that, of course, is not borrowed or gifted or anything is end. Then they put Michael Bodinia Mitchell PhD or something. But because you need to reverence God. Mm -hmm. I think the problem, the reason why a lot of people spend more time in prayer, but no power, no results, is because we don't we approach don't. prayer with reverence. Mm -hmm. We get into prayer as if we are talking to our mate, wow. our, f our colleague. But I think that sometimes the feeling is like, oh, there's grace, God understands. So people... <laughs> you see, 
Um, the doctor understands that a bad medication can kill you. Um, <laughs> you, as a driver, you understand that acceleration can also kill you. Yeah. Paul said, should we say that because of grace, sin should abound? abound. Then he said, God forbid. The problem with this generation is that we take too many things for granted. granted. If God does not change, and is the God who carved the earth open and caused people to get into it and cover them up, he hasn't changed. Hasn't He's changed. still that same God. The same God who parted the Red Sea, he's the, still the same God. Yeah. The same God who brought the plagues, is still the same. The same God who brought the manna to, is the same God. He doesn't change. The nature of God doesn't change. The principles of God are the same. Yeah. What changes with God is his methods. So I normally say God has methodological elasticity. God is very elastic when it comes to his methods. But his principles are the same. If God did not take lightly to somebody holding the ark, if the person is not consecrated to, what makes you think you can go to God anyhow? Wow, thank you, Papa. We should get to a place where we reverence God. Yes. I think that is one of the madness and folly of charismatism. Charismatism, Pentecostalism is neutralizing the sacred nature of our faith and our worship whereby people think that I can even get out of the bed of adultery and fornication and stand and say he is a good God. Wow. Without even asking for forgiveness. Wow. Wow. So somebody, a choir person, a music leader, can just move from the boyfriend's house, bath in that house, dress up from that house, stand on a sacred altar, and project God's holiness, and the boyfriend is watching that live stream and thinking, what a joke. Hmm. And sometimes we are thinking, oh, he doesn't love God enough. Your demonstration of love is substandard. Wow. Wow. So you are not showing that boy the way to love God. Wow. So we Thank marry, you, and then the marriage is failing, and you are praying to God, Stop questioning the fruits and start asking the roots. What was the foundation of the relationship? Yeah. Yeah. The foundation was not good. What I mean is that this generation no doesn't God. understand reverence. The word honor is not in the vocabulary of this generation. We don't know how to honor parents. We don't know how to honor senior men. We don't know how to honor senior women. We don't honor our senior colleagues. We don't, there is no honor. Yeah. So a young man, you see a young man in so Look at the political space. A young man, a baby with a sharp teeth, tearing <laughs> apart old men. There is no honor. The society has lost every fabric or strand of honor. Yeah. And it is reflective in our worship. Yeah. That is why, listen, in those days, when there is worship, I'm not talking about even my time, I'm talking about the biblical era. When Moses will hear that call the people for an assembly, the kind of enthusiasm, mm -hmm. the, the haste, when the Bible says the king's business demands it, the haste with which... Now look at these times. When somebody's even late for church and the walk from the person's second-hand car. <laughs> There's no remorse. It's, like, oh, no. it's, it's not as if the person just <laughs> landed with even a G4 private jet <laughs> and... The, no, second-hand... Maybe accident <laughs> repaired car. And the way the person will even lock the door and take his time or a time to just lock it and walk majestically. And when he gets into the church too, begins to look around and tell the ashes, that is where I want to sit. I don't want to sit. Wow. Wow. That is reverence. And you are wondering why God is not listening wow. to you. You don't reverence him. Wow. Wow. Yes, Papa. You are late for a service. You are late for worship. You are late for a worship experience. 
you are late for a prayer meeting. Do you know what it really means? It's just like being late for an appointment with a superior. superior. You, let me use the word a superior. Like your boss called you for a meeting, you were late, and when you got to the car park too, and your boss was Watching sitting waiting, then. you were you were walking unconcerned. Now, for you to be able to appreciate reverence, those are some of the images you should draw. Yeah. Wow. Papa, thank, thank you so very much. I, I really didn't see it that, that way, that reverence is very, very key for our prayers to be mm. answered. Definitely. Papa, I would like to know, are there other things that make our prayers effective? Some people like to use um, prayer shawls. Some people like to use anointing oil. Some people like to, maybe when they are praying, they clap their hands, they lift up their hands, they bow down. There are some people also that feel that there are certain times that prayer is effective, maybe midnight, early in the morning, in the afternoon. Can you please throw some light on that? Well, anointing oil, prayer shawls, all of that, those are all, they are tokens that normally tokens cannot be downplayed, but they are not the mainstay of prayer. Okay. Not at all. Because you get to a place where you won't have your anointing oil, your relationship will matter. Yeah. You get to a space where you, you're, if you happen to be in your office or your workspace where you didn't go with your prayer shawl and there is an emergency that is calling for prayer, will you go for your prayer shawl? You say, please hold on, let me go back home and pick my prayer shawl. You won't do that. Mm -hmm. Prayer is more of relationship, yeah. not the props. Yeah. I'll call the prayer shawl, the anointing oil, the scented candles, the incense people, I mean, in Catholicism, in the Catholic Church, we burn incense, they do, they light their candles, and all of that, some, some sets, Christian sets do that. But those are all props. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's not the show, it's not the oil, it's not the incense, it's not the candle, it's your relationship. relationship. So instead of, listen, God lives outside of time. So there is no time God can't answer prayer. Amen. Amen. Time is a man-made thing. God did not tell 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock. We looked at the position of the sun in relation to the shadow. Wow. And said when the shadow is at this degree, it is say 12 o'clock, it is 1 p.m., it is 3 p.m. Then with that, we were able to tell time. based on the position of the sun and the moon. Use that. But God lives in eternity. Amen. He lives before time. He will outlive time. Time is beneath God. He is not. So what I mean is that you need time. God doesn't. We need time. God you doesn't. need time. Yeah. He doesn't need time. Because he's not a creature of time. You are creatures of time. I was born on the 13th of October. That was the time or the date I was born, a particular time in the history of the universe that I was born. What that means is I am a creator of time. Yeah. He wasn't born. Wow. He yeah. is no creator of time. So you need time. I keep telling people that God works with our time. So if you decide that you want to meet God at 12 midnight, he will show up. Wow. wow. It's your 12 midnight. Don't forget, a, thousand, a, year is, a day is like a thousand oh, years yes. before him. So what it means is that to him, the calendar of man is thrown overboard, thrown out of the window. Wow. So it's not midnight prayer. It's more of the sacrifice to it. Okay, Papa. Because there is an element of sacrifice. You could have been sleeping at that time. The encounter between um, Jacob and the angel, the angel said, allow me to go for day is breaking because, of course, the time that humans work is the day. The time that technically spirits are at their peak is when men are resting. Okay, So most of the spiritual things are done at night. I understand that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I mean is that it's more of the sacrifice that the you at the particular time you were supposed to be sleeping. You decided to sacrifice your night rest to have an encounter. So that is sacrifice. That makes it special. Wow. Okay? Wow. 
that makes it, that makes it um, there is an element of sacrifice there. And God loves sacrifices wow. as well. So um, there is, we shouldn't be looking more of the props. The props shouldn't, like the prayer show, the candles, the incense, the anointing oils, the whatever. Th those are props. Yes, Without relationship, those things are useless. Yeah. Do you think a holy God will want to have any kind of encounter with a filthy show? <laughs> no, Papa. He won't. So seek relationship, not the oil. Amen. Go after a relationship with God, not a prayer mantle. Amen. Amen. Because if your relationship is good, with or without mantle, Absolutely. when you call on him, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. So prayer starts at the heart. It's the humi humble themselves means that the state of your heart should be right. If they will humble themselves and pray. So the number one requirement to prayer is your humility. humility. When you humble yourself before God, then you seek his face. Amen. That is another layer of prayer. Amen. Wow. Turn from his wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. So there are certain dimensions that God will want us to wow. Wow. Um, traverse. Yes. Wow. Th thank you so much, Papa. We're going on a short break right now. So viewers, we're going on a short break and we'll be back in the... I'm so excited. I'm being blessed by the things that Papa is teaching us about prayer. I've learned the importance of reverence, that you know, reverence is very key. It enables our prayers to be answered. I've also learned that relationship, our relationship with God is very important, that many times people put their trust, their confidence in prayer mantles, in shawls, you know, in certain specific times in praying, but it's our relationship with God. So please do well to stay tuned, stay connected. And we'd like to receive your questions also. So any question you have about prayer, Please do well to put it in the comment section and Papa will be answering them. In 2014, we experienced grace at work. That the excellence of power may be of God and not of us. Glory to God. In 2015, a divine turnaround. Christ came to tell somebody today, it is a day of your turnaround. God has fixed you and God is turning you around. Greater things are lying ahead of you. You will arise and you will go forward. The wheels of favor. 2016. I see a glory breaking out now. He will cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. Jesus the Christ 2017. To defy the ability of any human being to measure, I've come to make an announcement. Something good is about to come out of you. 2018, Jesus, the miracle. Worker. Sometimes you need to get dirty with the devil and tell him, I don't think so. You come against me, I split you. Yes, I will. I'll crack you right upside the head and I'll make you regret the day you ever put cancer on anybody in my family's body. I'll make you regret. In 2019, the same Jesus. Every shot. We are just telling our haters that there is nothing they can do about what God wants to do with us. Can you give God your loudest shout of prayer? We are his representatives on earth and he's our representatives in heaven. So we can never be defeated. You know why? You cannot be defeated when Jesus is your lawyer. In 2020. It's time to hashtag share your experience over the years with us as we celebrate experience from the 11th to 18th October this year. Share your experience by texting or making a video and sending to us via WhatsApp on 055-865-9269 or any of our social media handles. God bless you. Welcome back to another wonderful session of Wednesday Live with Dr. Michael Bwedi Nyameche. We've been learning about prayer. And uh, before we went on the break, Papa was teaching us about the importance of reverence. Jesus Christ said that when he was teaching about prayer, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So it's very important that we reverence God. 
And Papa made us see that sometimes when people are praying, they receive calls during their, their prayer times. And I want to ask you, do, do you do that when you have a, when you're praying, do you pick up your phone call, do you check your text messages, your WhatsApp messages? All those things do not show reverence to God and they have a way of negating our prayers. So I believe that through these sessions, we are going to learn to really reverence the Lord. And as we reverence God, God himself is going to answer our prayers. Papa, thank you so very much. You're welcome, sir. We are really happy to have you once again. Welcome. Papa, we'll like, I'd like to find out, um, there are people that you know, look at what Jesus Christ has accomplished on the cross, and uh, they sometimes feel that there are certain things that one shouldn't pray about because it has already been dealt with on the like cross. Like what? Like dealing with generational cases. They feel that Christ has already accomplished those things, dealt with those things. So why do we really pray about those things? Please, we'd like you to sh shed some light on that. He's the bread of life. And people still eat. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the, uh, you know, it's quite interesting, yes, man of God, that um, anytime I hear anything like that, I get very surprised that we are failing to separate the fact that whatever he did was to bring us back to him. Amen. He came to make us at one with God. We call it atonement. To reconcile us back unto God. But when you become born again, your name doesn't change. Yeah. I was a very black boy when I became born again, and uh, when I became born again, I did not lose uh, my blackness. <laughs> so uh, the change was more of my inward man. Mm -hmm. We talk about generational things because of what is passed on to us. Yeah. Your mom, my mom, I look like my mother. Okay, not my, like my dad. You've met my dad. Yes, sir. My dad is uh, light-skinned and um, tall, tall, big tall, and heavy. Yes. I am small, <laughs> and I am dark, and I'm not that tall. So I'm not anything like my dad, but I'm like my mom. So there are some things that my mom passed to me, mm. genetically. The finished work on the cross doesn't negate diabetes that is genetic. Wow. The finished work, there are doctors. Yeah. In fact, there is a doctor here right now. The finished work on the cross does not stop you from being hypertensive if your mother or dad was hypertensive and it was passed on. The problem that people fail to appreciate is that his death is to give you a passport to an eternal rest. Amen. But there are certain things on earth that you need to get done. Yeah. So why is it that the finished work on the cross doesn't give you a certificate that you completed university with honors? But you work at it. Sure. Let us not live in a cocoon of madness and um, saddle ourselves with the um, joy of irresponsibility. Let us always think that what Christ did, there is a role, and you on earth, you have your role to play. Yes, Papa. You can't pray for, your, for oral hygiene. You have to work at it. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> if you need to floss, you have to do your own floss. And if you need to brush well, you have to brush well. You can't pray yourself out of it. If you are hungry, you cannot say that his finished work on the cross means that I am full. Yeah, rich. <laughs> so yeah. so we, I don't want people, I will always say it, and let me say it again. God did not save your soul for you to lose your mind. There are certain things that are expected of you as a believer. Yeah. 
And God has a role to play in your life just as you have a role to play. Communication, the prayer you are talking about, is a two-way thing. You can't say that because he died, you don't have to pray about certain things anymore. There are certain things, just as genetically some things were handed over to you, you have to pray your way out of it. I'm telling you, one of our, um, our sons in the house, um, who I had mentioned it even on one of the um, Command Your Mornings, um, when in his family, nobody had traveled, and um, one of the cousins had traveled, and the auntie made a declaration that apart from that daughter of hers, nobody in the family will travel. Oh. And when she had applied to go to the UK, she was lying there and she felt somebody waking him up. Um, he felt somebody waking him up. And he, he was told, pray your way out of it. Wow. Wow. So why are we not saying the finished work on the cross simply means, then where is prayer? The Jesus you are saying finished the work on the cross. He prayed okay. until he got to a place where we call hemohydrosis. That the sweat glands began to produce blood. Yeah. So there was blood mixed with water coming out of his sweat glands. Jesus. Hmm. For without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifested in the flesh. Oh, hold on. That is New Testament scripture. Go back to Old Testament. And his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God has vacated his throne in the heavens and is now with men. God is with us. Amen. God is with men. For without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness that God manifested in the flesh. And yet, this same God prayed. Wow. To let you know that once you take on this mortality, prayer That's should be like the air you breathe. Amen. So the Bible will tell you pray without ceasing. Wow. You need to understand that no matter how logical you are, nothing can explain prayer away. Amen. Because prayer is an act of surrender. Wow. It's a display of total trust in God. Wow. Peter will tell them, therefore come ye from amongst them. So even if there is anything, you have to get out. And prayer is just like telling God that I believe in the finished work on the cross. Amen. I want to live it on earth. So guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but you are mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. That is prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer is when the man begins to appreciate his weakness and allows God to hold him by his hand and drag him out Hallelujah. of trouble. Hallelujah. That's prayer. Wow. You can't sit and wish that things will happen. Wow. You pray them into being. You Hallelujah. partner with God. Prayer is that partnership wow. that brings things into manifestation. Wow. Thank you so very much, Papa. I believe that, that that has really been clarified in the minds of people. I believe that too. Amen, amen. Papa, I want to ask a question also that, you know, when, when do we know whether our prayer has been answered and when, where does persistence of, in prayer come in? Because sometimes it's like people are praying, they keep on praying, keep on praying about the same thing. And uh, is there a point where they have to stop? And is, is continuous prayer also a sign of unbelief? Well, most of the time, continuous prayer is as a result of the deafness of the man. Because we, don't, we have made prayer a one-sided... Um, it's not a conversation. Conversation is supposed to be two-sided. Prayer is no more a dialogue, it's a monologue. Whereby we pray to God and we don't listen for feedback. Oh, okay. If prayer is communication, and you pray and you, you pause to hear God. God will tell you, it's done. I'm waiting. Just wait on me. Give me three years. This thing that you are looking for, I'll do it. But it, it happened in the Bible. Yeah. And they will pray and the Lord will tell them, you go into captivity for 70 years. So whilst you are there for 59, you know that you are left at 11. Yeah. It's true. So you don't pray that God you should... You don't waste your time wow. on that. You rather spend the energy on other things. Because you know timelines. But because we don't listen, we don't even know timelines. Yeah. Wow. There is a part, there is a place for persistence in prayer. 
That's why Jesus used the parable of the, the person or the man that had a visitor, and the visitor came at night and needed bread and had to go and knock on the door of the bread seller. And um, yeah, 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 knocked, kept on knocking until he was saved. Yeah. Okay. There is a place for persistence. There is a place for continuity. There is a place of continuous hammering um, um, of a point. But the main problem, again, is that if we will pause to listen and make prayer a conversation, most of our troubles will go away. Amen. The problem is that prayer is not a conversation. It's just a monologue. God, da 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 Amen. So where is the place of meditation? Where is the place of pausing to say, Lord, speak for your servant here? Amen. 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 So we just dump things on the file of on the table we, we dump files on the tables of God and we don't even wait to see uh, whether he is minuting on them and the instruction he is giving to the angels that are supposed to carry out that divine assignment we don't wow and so one prayer you can pray it a thousand times maybe the lord is just saying to you nope i'm not giving that to you but because you didn't hear, no, I'm not giving that to you. You continued praying. You continue praying. And maybe if you, were, you had a listening ear, you would have asked God, Father, I, I think I need this too badly. Why don't you want me to have it? And God will tell you. Let me give you an example. There is a lady who prayed for marriage. Okay, Father. She prayed to be married, prayed for marriage, and a young man showed up. Wow. She was so excited about it. She sought for counsel. And when she sought for counsel, she was told that he shouldn't marry that young man. The lady immediately said that is a false direction from a false prophet <laughs> wow. and God has answered her prayer and da, 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 da. the lady to cut a long story short the lady went ahead and got married to this young man the young man died almost a month after wedding wow that's unfortunate and the lady became a widow. I know that's an, an angle to look at. It's an unfortunate event. The lady went back to God and God said unto the lady, audibly, audibly, I'm not talking about through another person, audibly, I didn't want you to go into that marriage because her time, his time on earth was short. He was going to exit. Yes, Lord. And that is the divine time of his exit. Please, don't say that somebody dying young means that the person died prematurely. No, because men come on earth for an assignment. Jesus died at the age of 33 years and 6 months. John the Baptist died even earlier than that or younger than that. But they all fulfilled the assignment. And so life is about assignment. It's not about 100 years and 200 years. That doesn't matter. It's the assignment. So in the calendar of God, the boy had finished his assignment. He had to go home. And the young lady who was so carried away by the noise and the rasmataz around marriage and the pageantry and all of that, wanted that, not knowing that God didn't want her to get into that marriage because God was saving that young lady from becoming a widow. So is it possible that we just dumped it on the tables of God and anything? Because most of the time, what you call an answer to a prayer is probably an invitation or a bait from hell. Papa, can you, can you repeat and unpack it? <laughs> I'm saying that most of the time, you see, the devil is cunning. Yeah. So you might be praying, for instance, you might be praying about might. And the devil knows that is where your heart is. The devil can set you up. Yeah. 
And the devil will get you when he sets you up because when you prayed, you didn't wait on God for feedback. Wow. And so when the devil in trousers showed up, hmm. wow. you thought it was a blessing in disguise. Wow. But it was a devil in trousers. Wow. 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 So a lot of people have my devil. <laughs> Bless you, Lord. So Bless the you. devil can open up a window for you and you think it's a route of escape. Amen. Uh, but it's not so. Thank you. A lot of the times, what you call an opportunity might be an entrapment. Wow. But it is your ability to discern and your closeness to God and your maturity in Him and how you communicate with God that will extricate you from all these things. Wow. If you don't have solid communications with God, I can guarantee you that you, wow. most of the exercises will be exercises in futility. Wow. Thank you very much, Papa. Papa, we have a question from Albert Quay, and he's saying that, is there anything called a prayer of deliverance for a Christian? And uh, what will necessitate such prayers? And then his third point is that, how do you know God has heard your prayer? Okay, I think you've answered that. How we know God has heard our prayer? And we can conclude and move on with other activities. So, Papa, I'll take the first two. Is there anything called a prayer of deliverance for a Christian? And what will necessitate such prayers? Well, um, maybe when I'm dealing with this week, if he watches Command Your Morning, I'm going to touch on certain things. Deliverance is, uh, there can be a prayer of deliverance um, for anybody. Um, it can be a chronic trait, habit. It can be an acquired uh, character, something that happened, especially when it comes to things like soul ties. Okay, Papa. Okay. So somebody can have, somebody is a Christian, tongue-talking, spirit-filled, fire baptized and yet any day the person dreams the person sees himself or herself in a secondary school in a primary school in a house that they, he grew up in or house she grew up in and um, she always sees herself back there so her soul is giving her information that is vital wow she the person has been saved but there are certain things that are connected to those places that the person need to pray and plead the blood yeah. against. Yeah. Wow. So when the Bible tells you that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, so, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in high places and all of that, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh. but they are mighty it's through God to so the pulling down of strongholds, casting down any imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience. So there are certain things that are mental thoughts, imaginations. They are mental. Some of the things, most of the deliverance are supposed to be mental. You can be brought out of Egypt but still live as an Egyptian. Wow. 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 So most Christians are only looking at breaking ancestral yokes without a mental renewal mentality. because most of them, the deliverance they need is mentality with their mentality. Wow. Mental deliverance. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Have you heard that song? <laughs> okay, you are too holy for that. You are a holy man. You are a holy man of God. <laughs> Bob Mali <Marley> said, <laughs> Robert Nesta Mali, he said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery for none but ourselves can free our minds. You have to get to that place where you are mentally delivered. Yeah. So deliverance, yes. You need, I believe, of course. You need deliverance. Wow. What do you use to know your old ways of life? Even if you knew how to walk and you become paralyzed, ask them. You still go through physio. Yeah. To re, you have to, most of the time, you have to unlearn what you learn to learn new things. You have to unlearn what you've learned to learn. Oh, yeah. Things. So the old way of doing things, so in our Kokala spot, now you say, you know moves. You have to unlearn them to learn how to, you used to spend time with girls or boys. You have to unlearn that to learn how to spend time with the Holy Spirit. It's Hallelujah. mental deliverance. Hallelujah. Wow. And so ties to us. So some of the times, because of the spiritual nature of the things, if, if you became born again and somebody who you yoked with, you went out with a, 
with uh, you were in a relationship with a girl mm. who was in um, a satanic coven and probably you did most of these people did even so uh, blood, blood covenant i think these days they have stopped but when when i was growing up in secondary schools hey it used to happen <laughs> The it girl and the boy, I don't, I don't think it still, it still happens. happens these days. It still happens. <laughs> it still happens. Then they will get a pin and prick themselves and prick themselves and put the blood together. And uh, they will make all their confessions and this one will suck on the other one's stump. So the, 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 the boy will suck on the lady's stump as in the blood and the... Wow. And you, you are saying you are now born again. And so that kind of thing it should be left hanging no you need deliverance wow. you need to that thing need to be broken out of your life because let me tell you something sexual relationships are one of the relationships that people take lightly but what if there is anything you shouldn't take for granted is sex because anytime you have a sexual encounter with somebody it is like putting a stamp in the soul of somebody wow that is why you can never forget these people you slept with in your lifetime even if you're a harlot and you did a hundred men. A hundred is small. Eh? <laughs> Maybe a thousand men, they can still remember. But those are certain things. So wow. you need deliverance from situations. We can continue next week if your wow. time is up. Well, then we, want, we can we continue thank you next so much. Week. It's been such a great blessing. I believe that we really will look forward to continue next week. Also. We will. Okay. We will. But I would like to hear your, your parting words. You know. Well, child of God, we are in dangerous times. And... Um, if there is any time that the believer is required to pray, it's now. If there is any time there should be consistency in prayer, it is now. If there is any time that I believe the heavens is making a clarion call on people, men and women, to cast aside their pride and their materialism and what they think they have, get off their high horses and go on their knees and pray, I believe it is now. When men begin to pray, men are able to tell God that we are ready for a move. Amen. We are just telling God to step into our situation, take charge, take over our lives, and lead us in the paths that you, only you can do and lead us. And I just want to encourage you. Maybe you prayed out of reverence, out of irreverence. I want you to ask for forgiveness. And pray again. And anytime you are praying, I want you to freeze anything that is around you. Because that's one of the problems that people have. We don't freeze things. So whilst there is prayer, there are too many activities going on around us. But you want to stop that. And I want to encourage you to stop that. And take your prayer life seriously. If you have friends that will only lead you to clubs and parties and picnics and, and call you about gossips. You don't need them. These are not the times for such friends. You should have friends who will call you and even if they are going to talk about things of life, they will be progressive. But you will once upon everybody's uh, lifetime, you will need a friend who will call you with a prayer topic. Who will call you with a prayer point? Who will call you with a Bible verse? And that is why normally I, I tell people to share command your morning. Because Amen. normally I think that with command your morning, even if you are not able to tell your friend that you know what, get up and pray. With that, it is an lunch. indirect yeah. way of telling the person it's time to pray. Yeah. And um, um, I just feel that we should all take our prayer life seriously. Because the world we live in is becoming more cruel day by day. And um, evil um, happens to be lingering um, all around us. And so if there has ever been a time that humanity needed God, I believe it's now. Amen. Amen. I strongly believe so. So those will be my parting words. But I'll see you tomorrow morning with Command Your Morning. I am poised. I'm ready. I'm ready to pray. I'm ready to break some curses. This year, 5,781, according to the Jewish calendar, is the year of breaking curses. Hallelujah. 5,781, which means that the new year had begun, which goes into 2021. We call it 2021. So we, ours will start in January. 
but in the biblical calendar, a new year had begun. Um, and the new year, this new year, 5781, simply means the year of breaking curses or demolishing satanic strongholds. And so, um, the God of the Bible <laughs> that we know um, knows that this year there are some curses that need to be broken. broken. And we have started early. We won't get into 2021 by our calendar, whether it's Gregorian, um, before we, we, we yes. start handling that. Yeah. And so I'll see you tomorrow morning with Command Your Morning, and I believe it's going to be explosive. Amen, amen. Thank you so very much, Papa. Viewers, it's been such an awesome and glorious time. Papa has assured us that next week we are going to continue about prayer because there are so many truths that we still need to learn from him. And I believe that God is going to bless you and God is going to refresh and encourage you. I want to remind you that our experience conference is coming on on the 11th to the 18th of October. And one of the things we want you to do is that we want you to share your experience. Over the years, many of you have participated, have joined, have come for the experience conference. You've been blessed by experience conference. We really want to hear from you. How has it been a blessing to you? You can text, you can take a video, do a recording of how experience conference has been a blessing to you. And you can send it to them. The number 055-865-9269. 055-865-9269. Or you can also share it on any of our social media handles, the BN Micro Ministries, the Lakers House Chapel International Facebook pages and media handles, and then Dr. Michael Bodinia Miche. And we'll be so much happy to hear from you. And please, tomorrow, like Papa made us know, tomorrow, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., we're coming your way with another glorious session of Command Your Morning. This week we've been dealing about curses, breaking curses. We've learned about curses that are spoken, curses that are written, and curses that are said inwardly. And like Papa has already made us understand that this year, according to the Jewish calendar, is the year of breaking of curses. So please do well to connect to Command Your Morning and let us break curses so that we can be free and we can experience and enjoy the glorious life that Christ came to purchase for us. God bless you. The Music Experience 2020, a live online worship experience featuring the gentlemen, Destiny Songs, Sandra Afri, Minister Oura, Kojo Tufour, Eric Jeshron, and Effie Grace. Join us live on the BN Michael social media handles for an unforgettable experience on the 11th October at 6 p.m. Hashtag share your experience. God bless you.